Nobody calls me Lebowski. You got the wrong guy. I'm the dude, man. Did you see the movie? A long time ago. I don't remember it real well, but... Anybody want to hear this before we go any further? Nor do I, and I saw it just last night. You're walking up to the will turn. My friend's like, that's, that's him, that's the dude. He's losing his mind, like freaking out. What do you mean, the dude? What's happening? There's people everywhere, things going on, and he's like, the dude, the movie. It's based on that man right there. Immediately, I was super comfortable around him, because I'm nuts. Do you ever have a feeling that you're like a Ferrari in a parking lot ready to go, and you're dying of terminal boredom in your work or where you live? living? We can change that. It's like glorifying a loser, but like in the best, romanticizing it. Did you ever really get riffied? Good. I lost the entire 80s. I get a phone call. Hello? And it's, you know, Joel and Ethan, dude, Duder, Duderino. We're doing this movie with uh, Jeff Bridges and uh, John Goodman. There's going to be a dude character in it. And if you look at me, look, I'm on the cusp. It could go either way, right? I mean, you know. And if it's John Goodman, I'm going, holy s***. They go, don't worry, dude. It's Jeff Bridges. I go, thank you, guys. I did not know that. Did they get the dude character right? How'd they do on that front? Physicality things they could have some fun with. The way he dances, the way he sits, the way he mumbles, you know, etc. Um, then they're going to take other things, things at my expense or the dude's expense, okay? So he's smoking a joint in the car, drops the roach, you know, and starts going like this, and then crashes the car. That's dude all the way. And here we are, the dream that is Lebowski Fest. And we're in our 14th year, we've done almost 100 Lebowski Fests all over the world. Yeah, maybe they don't take me seriously. Um, you know, I mean, why would you take somebody seriously who doesn't know what day it is? Because I'm not just that dude from Lebowski. I'm a guy who's helped tons of people's careers. Where else was the dude? Um, just date me in some place. Back in 1981, I helped Robert Redford start the Sundance Institute. An investor from the Coen Brothers' first film was there. And they're having to pitch this dark, dark movie that's in post called Blood Simple. After five minutes of watching that movie, we said, these guys are going to be around for a long, long time. Frank Danielle, Frank would say, influence is everything. Think of the entrance at Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, the four, four scenes. You know, think of Mel Gibson in, in uh, you know, on the roof in Venice, with grabbing the guy who's about to jump off the roof. You want to jump? You want to jump? OK, I want to jump, too. Let's f***ing jump. Come on. He's crazier than the crazy guy, OK? That's a billion dollar entrance for four movies. Still got sound? The character of the dude is very laid back, and uh, Jeff Dowd is not laid back, I wouldn't say. He's, he's, he's an activist, you know? He's a fighter. What it's always been about, and it still is about, is racial equality and justice. That came to a head with the Vietnam War. I led 25,000 people in Seattle onto the freeway. I shouldn't say I. Four or five of us were up front. You ever hear of the Seattle Seven? Mm. That was me. The Nixon administration charges with conspiracy to destroy federal property. We were put in jail for contempt of court. So when we did the contempt thing, I unveiled a full-size Nazi flag. For those of you who've never seen a Nazi flag, and I'd never seen one before, it is unbelievably heavy symbols. And we put it on his elevated bench. And I talked about how he was being a good German. Those were the people that sat by when stuff was moving in the wrong direction and didn't do anything. This man appeared to have no fear at all. It came from a rabble-rouser personality, which is what he's got. Dude has abandonment issues. I was abandoned from my mother's breast instantly because of her mother thought a woman, 
hired a nurse since they couldn't afford it anyway, and she thought it was improper to have a kid breastfed. Uh, and they had visiting hours. So I didn't even get to see my parents, okay? It's sometimes hard to decipher what he's saying. You have to... <laughs> but it's always really worth paying attention and listening because there's really a valid thing there. No politician in the history of the world has ever been a leader. None. Nah, blow everybody in the West Hollywood right now, if you can name me one politician that was a leader. 8% sustainable energy with 57% solar. My mother died in the hospital because they blew the hand off. But yeah, OJ also killed his wife, okay? Those are not mutually exclusive things. You know, you have, anyhow, the point is, communication is bad, okay? Okay. Right on. Let them see that I'm being filmed. Okay, so they don't think I'm a crazy beggar, because that's the first quick thing you're gonna say. Excuse me, folks. You know, people come up to me all the time, and they all say, I want to thank you so much. And then I say, you, you, you like the movie and stuff. And I said, you know, we like the movie, I want to thank you. And I said, why? They said, well, you speak the truth. And in a world where so many people have to put on their costumes and masks every day, people appreciate that a lot. What is the significance of the dude's character, mythologically? The dude is a holy fool. The best reference point is the jester in the, in the royal court, in the king's court. The one guy who told it like it was. Everybody else would never say, hey, king, you know, put on a little weight here, you know. So the holy fool is at a time when we need truth more than ever, is trying to get us to the truth in a funny way. Goodbye.